Thanks, Betty, for the introduction. So as you heard Betty interviewing uh, customers, GFK and Salesforce.com, both of them have done a remarkable transformation leveraging cloud technologies. Now, it's interesting to note in this new world, post-pandemic world, where there is so much turbulence and so much change, it is not the strongest or the biggest that survive, but it is, true to Darwinian theory, the ones that are the most adaptable the ones that are the most agile that survive. And these are the ones who have the business agility to capitalize on a new opportunity when it shows up, to capitalize on changes in the market. And today business agility is truly driven by software agility or application agility. Being able to quickly get all your employees to work from home, being able to deploy that new app that allows someone to do export import forms in a remote way, being able to do Zoom based telemedicine. All these are examples of transformations that have happened just in the last year, but were powered by very strong applications and quick delivery of applications. So let us look at the tools, the processes and the technologies that companies use in order to leverage the power of cloud to deliver that app agility. And that's what we call the cloud operating model. Now, when you think about the operating model, it is truly anchored at the top level by your application strategy. And when you think about applications, you have a spectrum of those applications. You have existing applications. You may have applications that you want to transform to be able to scale, to be able to geolocate them close to your customers. And you have applications that you're building new, maybe leveraging native container services and PaaS platform services and native public cloud services. And so the strategies that you choose for your applications depends on the type of application and depends on the business priority. You may choose to retain and optimize existing applications. You can rehost current applications in other platforms, potentially maybe to scale them out or to make them available uh, closer to your customers, make them more performant. You can replatform these applications, containerize them so that they are easier to manage and update. You can totally rebuild uh, and refactor applications or even build new ones so that they are truly based on microservices um, principles, that uh, they take the advantages of past services that are available in, at customers. And finally, you have applications that you may decide to just retire and you may completely go with a SaaS based application. Now, irrespective of what application you choose, ultimately the lines of businesses, the developers who are driving the application strategy and who are building these applications need to also build it on platforms. Whether it is native public cloud platforms, whether it is different kinds of application platforms, they choose the platform. Now, if it is a native public cloud, for developers, it truly gives freedom. You can have your infrastructure as a service, container as a service, different platform services, all available for direct consumption as a developer, and you can start building your applications. And the nice thing is you also have the APIs to drive the performance, cost, security, and even the delivery of these applications, the templating of these applications. Of course, each one of these clouds that you deploy to has their own set of toolings and their own set of uh, processes and their own set of skills that need to be hired. But you are able to start consumption right away. And that is the true power that native public clouds give. Now, you also have infrastructure that is out there in the edge in your retail locations, in your data center, in your managed data center. There is large amounts of data that you have collected, which we call data gravity over the years that you want to, let us say, do AI ML on. Now, these, um, uh, these, this infrastructure and these applications may be sitting distributed across various locations. But the question is, why wouldn't you want a similar experience, just like the native public cloud, on this private infrastructure also? 
a lot of times it is based on VMware vSphere. You've got native applications. And imagine we could give you the ability to build the cloud like capability on top of this infrastructure. So that is the first component of the cloud operating model. Truly think of everything as cloud and make sure you have a common consumption surface available. And now with VMware Cloud, we also offer these capabilities across AWS, Azure, GCP, Oracle, and thousands of vCloud uh, pro provider partners. The idea is that you've got this VMware-based infrastructure available on tap anywhere. And then when you combine that with the vRealize platform, as well as the Tanzu platform, you can truly curate an IaaS, PaaS, and CaaS, which is container as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service set of capabilities. And now you can consume VMware Cloud just like any other cloud. You're able to manage the performance, the cost, the security, and the delivery automation across VMware Cloud. So nice thing is you have now a cloud-based environment. You have truly freed the developers from having to um, wait on different other teams, wait on IT, and you, you have given them a set of services that they can develop very fast to. But now there is a new problem that has surfaced, which is you have all these islands of clouds. How do you make sure that you know that these are all secure? How do you ensure that the security policy that is applied to one applies to the other clouds? How do you know whether your costs are under control? And how do you even know what is the most optimal place to put an application based on the cost structure of these individual clouds? How do you do automation of delivery? And how do you do late binding decisions on how to scale and size these applications? And how do you measure the performance across all these environments and deliver the connectivity and the traffic and the network characteristics are maintained. These are hard problems and new problems and challenges that come, come across when you have multiple clouds. And most customers that we talk to, including the ones that we spoke, that Betty spoke to, usually have one plus something. Usually they have an on-prem cloud infrastructure along with a bunch of public clouds. And that is where the second tenet of our operating model comes in. You need a set of capabilities, both from a process perspective, but also from a best practices perspective that allows you to manage across these clouds. And that is where our, and, and what you need to manage still stays the same. You need to manage your cost, your security. You have to make sure you have the, you can truly deliver on the health and performance of your application. And you also need to make sure you truly are able to automate all the mundane out. You have clean pipelines. You have ability to templatize your applications. You have the ability to make late binding decisions and you have the ability to do day two automation. So the set of capabilities stay the same, but they have to apply across consistently across multiple clouds. And that is where with a combination of uh, properties that we have or assets that we have with cloud health, we are able to deliver consistent cost and security across all your public cloud environments. You can not only understand your costs from a visibility perspective, you can optimize your costs and automate the policies around future governance and future consumption. Similarly, from a security perspective, you, are, you can understand how applications are communicating to each other. What is the access they have to the internet? There is no more firewall Data based, data, based data center out there. So you truly have to think about communications at a global scale. And when you think about security, it has to scale and it has to be at the speed of the change that is happening in this public cloud and containerized environment. With vRealize and Tanzu, you can have now a common infrastructure as service, a common templating mechanism to define your application once and deploy it anywhere. And a consistent container runtime across all environments, across all clouds, and a consistent container management capability that applies even to AKS, EKS, and the native container services. So the combination of these solutions truly allow you to, again, give, have consistent cost, security, performance, and automation across all these environments.
So this 1 and 1 plus 2 is what we call the cloud operating model. Now, if you look at what GFK did, they started their journey with build a cloud. They built a consistent cloud consumption surface with a catalog, governance policies, and consistent automation on their vSphere-based infrastructure. And then as they added the new native public clouds, it was very easy for them to transition those set of capabilities to manage across multiple clouds. With Tableau and Salesforce.com, they started with a whole bunch of native public clouds. And as they acquired more com companies and as they added more cl clouds, they were very easily able to scale the core cloud health infrastructure from one cloud to multiple clouds to ultimately, again, drive that optimization and decision making. So the cloud operating model, when done right, can truly light up the fire in terms of app agility and help you bring those business ideas to life much faster. And it also, in parallel, allows you to truly drive much higher productivity and speed as we talked about. But it's interesting, with speed, we also can drive down the unplanned downtime, the unwanted overages on software costs, the reduction in cloud spend, the reduction in security violations. So while you're improving agility, you're also improving overall your operational metrics. So again, a cloud operating model when then done right can truly deliver that app agility that will allow you to make your business ideas come to life. Thank you. Thanks, Pradima. That was so very informative. It has been an exciting journey into multi-cloud at VMware with our VMware Cloud solution. Our engineers are continuously innovating on new capabilities and services for cloud infrastructure, management and application development, and expanding the availability of those functionality across more clouds and more regions. These enhancements continue our mission to provide customers with the speed they need to deliver new apps to market and migrate apps to the cloud faster. The choice to use every cloud and service to build great apps and run them anywhere. And an operating model to bring all of this together efficiently, securely, and at lower total costs across every app and every cloud. I am so very excited about what our customers are doing with VMware Cloud and can't wait to share more of those stories with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. And I'll see you in the cloud. Thank you.